Hello again and welcome to the module on risks for cultural heritage. And we are going to start this module off with a brief introduction in different threats to cultural heritage. We're going to start with what I call the protection pyramids. You see it now on the screen. And if you imagine a pyramid and cultural heritage, we have the very baseline of the pyramid, which consists of buildings that are not listed or mapped, of artifacts that are not listed or mapped as cultural heritage, of monuments. That's the very basis of this pyramid. There's a lot of that out there. Then out of this pool, some monuments are protected, some artifacts are protected under National Monuments Protection Law. It's the nation states that decide which heritage is protected by National Monuments Protection. And usually out of that pool comes what is protected by the Hague Convention of 1954. The Hague Convention of 1954 dealing with cultural heritage protection in armed conflict. And this is international humanitarian law, which means that it's usually applicable in armed conflict, in war and not in peacetime, which makes it so important that the monuments, the buildings, the heritage that is protected by the Hague Convention of 1954 is also protected by monuments protection on a nation state level because then you can sanction breaches or destructions in peacetime as well. And that's what most nation states do usually, but it's not always the case. And on top of the pyramid, so to say, we have UNESCO World Heritage, that UNESCO label that um, is kind of the the highest recognition of uh, the importance of cultural heritage for people worldwide. You remember that there's an outstanding universal value that has to be fulfilled, and it's very hard criteria uh, to be fulfilled to get this label for certain cultural and natural heritage. But this is a kind of a protection pyramid. It's not a pyramid that uh, details the importance of cultural heritage. If you think about your life, if you think about yourself, your history, your story, the heritage you live with and connect to, it's maybe mostly listed on the very basis of the pyramid, which is not listed or mapped, but it is there. You live with it. It might be a local cemetery where your grandparents are buried. It might be a small chapel where your um, baptism took place, for example. It might be a stone monument you pass every day on your way to work since you were a child because you already passed it on your way to school. They don't even have to be protected on national uh, basis by monuments protection, but they're very important for you, for your daily life. And this is why sometimes the heritage that is not protected is even more important to us than the heritage that is protected. More important to us than UNESCO World Heritage. And I would like us to keep that in mind when we continue through this program, through this heritage protection program, because to protect heritage, it's not necessary that it is listed as uh, protected by national monuments protection. Heritage of all kinds and all levels is important and needs our protection. And when we're talking about protection, we also have to focus on a disaster management cycle. What you see here is a cycle, but this cycle doesn't mean that everything starts from the very beginning again and again and again and again. Because if you prepare for an incident, if you follow this cycle, if you do all the steps, you're always better prepared and better prepared and better prepared. So the preparation always gets better and the ratio, the rate of success for cultural heritage protection always gets better if you do prepare. It's not always a stupid start from the very beginning again and again and again. So at the very top in this uh, graph, you have the incident, whatever happens to cultural heritage that might damage it. Then you have a response phase following that. You have a recovery phase, a mitigation phase, and the preparedness phase. And for us at the Center for Cultural Property Protection at Krems, it is the preparedness phase that is very important, if not to say most important, because everything you prepare before a catastrophe strikes is likely to succeed. If you think out of the box, what can happen to the cultural heritage in question, the cultural heritage I'm in charge of protecting? What can damage it? If you think about that beforehand, before anything happens and prepare, do training, do education, stage exercises, so actually test whatever you've developed, the more you prepare, the more likelihood there is that whatever you prepare and train is likely 
to function in a catastrophic event. Because in a catastrophic event, it's not only cultural heritage that is threatened or damaged. It's usually people, people's lives at risk as well. And people come always first. If you don't have anything in place for your cultural heritage, it's very likely that your cultural heritage will be lost because you don't have anything prepared. If, however, you have some preparations in place, they are likely to work, even if the incident is usually not looking exactly the same as you imagine when preparing for it. So it can be preparedness phase, can be training, education. This course is a preparedness, part of a preparedness phase, actually. But um, it can be capped off with life exercises. Here in this picture, you see one of the exercises we staged together with emergency responders. Um, that can assist uh, in emergencies for cultural heritage and its protection. And with these exercises, we test what we have developed for protecting our cultural heritage and make sure that it actually works. And we also take lessons identified and learned from these exercises and put them into the preparation cycle and raise the preparedness level for our cultural heritage and its protection to a higher place, higher level. Talking about Threats to cultural and natural heritage, they can be threatened on a daily basis. I've mentioned neglect on the slide, but it can also be the lack of money, lack of interest in certain objects, in certain buildings, certain period of times um, even. There are natural catastrophes, catastrophes caused by natural events, very much linked to climate change and climate change induced events in the 21st century. But there's also terrorism and armed conflicts. And um, catastrophes, terrorism, armed conflict, they are also very much affecting human beings. And as we've just said, human lives always come first. So you have to think about something like cultural property protection in addition to protecting livelihoods, to protect human beings, to protect and save lives. Talking about different threats and in the end risks for cultural heritage that are out there. Um, there's a very comprehensive uh, online page called the Silk Guidelines, which has a Silk online tool where you can actually click on the different threats um, and then exercise and see how um, much at risk your collection or your house, uh, your museum might be. This is a great add-on to the SOS uh, Heritage online tools that you will be presented in much more detail in this course. So if you want to add some layers, check something in addition. Here's a good possibility. We put that in the um, comments as well, the link to the tool. They also have what is nice for us in this introductory lesson, a comprehensive overview of threats to cultural heritage. They can range from general security management to fire, flood, theft, vandalism, accidents and malfunctions, deterioration, van tear to climate, light, pest and mold, pollutants, severe weather conditions, earthquakes, violence, terrorism and armed conflict. And I've prepared some pictures, recent events, to give you not an idea, but to some, some pictures, some background material maybe for what we've just listed. You see, starting with fire, the fire in the Anna Amalia Library in Weimar in 2004 in Germany. In 2018, it was the National Museum of Brazil that was ablaze. And in 2019, only a year later, the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris in France burned. Coming to floods, here in the picture, we see the flood in Dresden in 2002 in Germany. And you see the cultural hotspot of Dresden underwater. There was a big flood in Ahrweiler in 2021, also in Germany. There were earthquakes. Recently, Turkey, Morocco, Nepal, but also in Italy before that, we see on the slide now pictures from the earthquake in Italy in 2016, um, supplied by the Commando Carabinieri Tutela Patrimonio Culturale, uh, a branch, a unit of the Italian Carabinieri task with cultural heritage protection. And um, we see them on the pictures recovering our altar pieces and statues from damaged churches. But in the 21st century, we also have the topic of wanton destruction of cultural heritage. If you think about the so-called Islamic State um, destructions in Mali, Timbuktu, um, 
in these cases, cultural heritage was targeted because it is cultural heritage to shock the world um, and to destroy what was labeled UNESCO World Heritage. So wanton destruction of UNESCO World Heritage labels or sites that are labeled UNESCO World Heritage, to be precise. Here's a picture of a destruction in the Near East, in the so-called Islamic State in Palmyra. But we also, and this is very sad, to have armed conflict again in the 21st century, peer-to-peer -peer conflict, near peer-to-peer -peer conflict, conventional armed conflict. Um, and this, of course, damages cultural heritage as well. And this is where we might link back to the Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the event of armed conflict, where also this is governed by international humanitarian law, how cultural heritage has to be protected by fighting parties, by the army um, during armed conflict. There will be an additional introductory uh, lesson on illicit trade in cultural heritage objects, in cultural heritage. And um, to start you thinking about that, there are great lists of ICOM of the International Council of Museums out there. Um, lists of cultural heritage at risk. In this case, you see on the slide the red list of Syrian cultural objects at risk. There are red lists out there for many more countries. They give a great overview of the types of heritage that are at risk um, from illicit excavations, illicit trading, cultural heritage, sometimes also destruction. And as takeaway, I would like you to have that threats to cultural heritage are manifold, are numerous, and that some of them actually can come risks for certain cultural heritage in question. And that it is always a good idea to prepare for anything that might happen. And when it comes to thinking about what might happen, do think out of the box and not only focus on what you know and what has happened in the past, but think big and Think about everything you can imagine and then prepare accordingly.